Hi, Janet here, and welcome to Janet's Kitchen Garden. Today's episode's all about the construction of bed number two. And that's the bed that's 16 foot long and four foot wide and also has a barrel roof. Now, why I'm sitting here under an umbrella? Because on Memorial Day this year, it's raining and it's barely above 70 degrees, which is so unlike our normal weather here in Dallas, but actually I'm kind of enjoying it. So during this video, this episode, we're going to be doing a lot of narration, myself and Bill, just to kind of explain the steps that we went through in building the 16 footer. So I'm ready if you are, let's get to it. Hi, welcome back. So our video will start off showing our removal of the temporary bunny fencing that we put around the temporary bed that replaced the existing bed that the tornado carried away to Oz, I guess. It was just in pieces down the alley, in the trees, we salvaged what we could, which is part of the fencing you see around the temporary bed. So the next step here is to create the second level to the bed above the existing bed. Uh, to do this, we bring two by six cedar, cut to length, trimmed evenly in square. We piece it together and then attach the corners using structural screws. Structural screws are easy to go in, they're nice and strong, they make a very easy, easy way to make the connection. And then we have our real secret here, which is where we use pocket screws to attach the new level that we're creating to the existing level below. We run a string line to make sure that all the boards are straight. Sometimes the cedar wavers a little bit, so we try to make all that straight. And once we finish doing all this, putting all these screws in, we have a second level to the bed. So here we are, we've got the second level to the bed attached. It's a little higher now, and now it comes time to build the rest of the bed. On the previous bed, bed number four, we built it all one structure after the other, the sides and then the roof and then sheathed the whole thing. Sheathing that roof with the hardware cloth in the air was a real problem. So we decided this time to use the existing bed as a template for the roof structure build the roof on the ground and then raise the roof into place and put the pillars in after the fact. Bit of a challenge to do, bit of a challenge to figure out, but we figured that the, uh, the ease of sheathing the roof was going to make this uh, worthwhile and much easier to do. So come with us and we'll figure out if it worked or not. So here we are, the rain's quit, the birds are chirping, it's time to talk about how we raise this roof here. Uh, the roof's been built, it looks great. It was a lot easier to build this roof on top of the existing bed uh, than it was raised in the air like we did for bed number four. Uh, but the issue now is how do we raise this built roof up into its final position? What we've decided to do is build some vertical scaffolding at each end of the bed the vertical scaffolding will contain a series of blocks and the blocks will be used to support the bed, each end of the bed, incrementally as we raise it up into position. 
That's the idea. Follow with us, see how it works. So here we are, the roof's up in the air, and that worked great, but it's not perfect. Uh, we need to take some time to plumb the four corners. Once they're plumb, we add the four corner posts, and then we add some additional cross bracing to make sure that all this stays in place. Now we have a square structure that's going to be nice and strong. Now comes the time to fill in the uh, additional pillars. Uh, we take some of the scaffolding lumber and remove it, we don't need it anymore since we have the corner posts, and cut it to fit into the additional pillar spaces. Once those are cut and fit, and we add a little cross bracing to make sure that it all stays in place, we have a completed structural support that we can then uh, wait for tomorrow to add the doors to. Okay, it's the next morning and we're ready to finish this bed. We put our hardware cloth on both ends and did the lights and start building the doors using recycled lumber and hardware cloth from the original bed that we were able to salvage after the tornado. And as we we're building the doors, I redesigned the doors, at least half of them. And what we have done on the redesign is that four of the doors will now be Dutch doors so that I can open the top half to allow the pollinators entry. 
This will enable us to keep the bottom half closed, keeping bunnies out, but the top half's down to allow in bees, butterflies, birds, wasps. And so now we're ready to get this done. So let's go. Ah, huge sigh of relief. Bed number two is finished and it's beautiful. The Dutch doors work wonderfully. I open them during the day, close them up at night. When you stand back and you look at these two beds with their barrel vaults, it takes me back to my childhood, to the St. Louis Zoo and the flight cage that had these soaring barrel vaults. It's just absolutely wonderful and I'm so happy and blessed that Bill will make changes at the drop of a hat like he did in creating the Dutch doors for me. If you all have enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, which will notify you when we upload new videos. Check out in the description, I'll have links to different products, different sites. Also our Amazon affiliate link. You click through to Amazon, and purchase through our link and that helps us out. We just really appreciate your support and if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. Coming up, we're going to have a future visit with a friend of ours, Michael, who's a beekeeper. We're gonna go visit him at one of his apiaries. We're gonna go back and see Brew and talk about organic pest control. So those are upcoming videos. We're also going to talk about doing fruit trees as an espalier, which I've got in the yard. We've got uh, four or five of those already in the yard, and we'll talk about those. So thanks so much for being here, and this is Janet from Janet's Kitchen Garden saying see you later. Bye.